This is Not Now, Maybe Later, a teen mental health podcast and a project of Sweetser. I'm glad you're listening, so let's get started. Hi, welcome to Not Now, Maybe Later. My name is Emily Ostro, and I am a licensed therapist in Maine who works with teens. This podcast is for you, whether you're in therapy now, just curious, or maybe someone else thinks you need to see a counselor, you've come to the right place. Listen to Not Now, Maybe Later, a teen mental health podcast. Hello, and welcome to Not Now, Maybe Later. This is my first episode. My name is Emily. I am a therapist in Maine who works with teenagers. And for this first show, I wanted to tackle a topic that I think is pretty much affecting everyone, which is social media and what it can do to one's mental health. So why did I pick this topic first? Well, to me, podcasts are social media. Bear with me and try this metaphor. So imagine online was like your school. The cafeteria would be social media and the library would be podcasts. So in the cafeteria, you can talk to your friends, you can eat, you can hear things. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of interactions. Podcasts are more sit and listens, learn something, uh, reflect. In this episode of Not Now, Maybe Later, I'm going to focus on social media and how it affects your mental health. When I say social media, I'm talking about apps or websites like Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. All of these are widely used by teens like you, and all of them can have an impact on how you're feeling. The purpose of this podcast is to give you information that helps you determine how to improve your mental health, and in some cases, where the resources are to help you to do that. That, for today, is on how you can use social media or not to improve how you're feeling. This is the disclaimer. This podcast is for your listening enjoyment, but it is not therapy. If you're struggling and need help right now, tell someone in your real life. If you're in crisis and you live in Maine, call or text 888-568-1112 or text the word HOME, H-O-M-E, to 741-741. Don't wait. Ask for help. So if teens are spending more than an hour a day on there, it could have a little bit of an effect on how someone is feeling about themselves or the world. Have you heard of doom Doom scrolling? scrolling? I had not, but then I was researching this podcast and I found out what this was. So in case you haven't, doom Doom scrolling scrolling is going online and seeking out sort of provocative or bad news and getting kind of sucked into it. This invariably is going to have a pretty negative effect on how you view the world or what you think about people and yourself. So that's one particularly difficult part of social media is there's a lot of stuff out there that you can read that will make you angry or feel isolated. And that's sort of one of the downsides. I don't think it's all downsides, though. As we know, we're all using social media so that we can feel connected to people. We can feel like there's a place where we belong. A lot of teenagers in particular, you might feel like you go there and that's where you express your emotions or you get control of them. A lot, a lot of people seek out and give emotional support to one another online. It's also just part of figuring out who you want to be and who you are. And did you know that every time a notification comes through or a like comes through, you get a little hit of dopamine. So that feels good and we become dependent on that over time to feel good if we're really relying on it heavily. Uh, The other reason social media is kind of a big deal right now is there's a huge uh, lawsuit that's happening at the time of this recording against Meta. The idea is that they are causing mental health issues to worsen in users, in particular in teenage users. This also is a suit against TikTok and Snapchat. So stay tuned. We'll see what happens with that. Okay. So what have we learned about ways that going online and using these apps can negatively affect your mental health? Well, first off, when are you doing it? Is it bedtime? Is it nighttime when you finally are done with your day and you just want to relax? So sometimes that leads to sleep disturbance, lost sleep, less sleep, could even affect your dreaming. 
The other time we might be doing it is when we're in school, which makes it a distraction from learning and maybe you miss what the teacher's saying or you get in trouble for having your phone out. One other uh, phenomenon about social media that's unlike most anything else except for maybe food, drugs, maybe video games, is that social media has algorithms which are designed specifically to keep us scrolling. So once you're on there, you can go and go and go, and the apps are actually trying to give you more and more things that you would like to look at. Why do they do that? Well, it certainly helps with any advertising and creates a lot of usage. This is not all exclusive to social media. Um, It happens in other ways too, but the last thing that comes up with social media and socializing in general is FOMO. So FOMO, the fear of missing out, is the belief that you should be vigilant so you don't miss out on anything important. And with social media, you can spend so much time making sure you know everything that is happening. I'm going to pause on talking about the factors that cause social media to affect mental health and just ask you for a second to consider how it makes you feel. When you're on there looking at videos or messaging with people, how do you feel? When you get off, how do you feel? And that's kind of a way to check whether or not your use of social media is having a negative effect on your mental health. Okay, now comes the hopefully helpful bits of information from this episode. What are the signs that you should take a break from social media? So first, it's not fun anymore. You no longer get joy or connection by being on these apps. Another sign, you find yourself comparing yourself to others. Maybe it's causing you to have thoughts like, I'm not good enough or pretty enough or no one is likes you. This is not good for you. No device should ever make you feel that way, or anyone on it for that matter. Uh, As mentioned earlier, you should probably take a break if you find you're spending time doom Doom scrolling. scrolling. And if it's the last thing you see at night, the screen, the apps, there really is some evidence that the blue light suppresses melatonin, so the screen causes you to not produce melatonin, which is the sleepy hormones that get you to sleep. And finally... If you find using apps is no longer a nice-to-have activity, but it's a need-to-have activity, it's probably time to set some limitations on your use. So from here on out on this episode, it's sort of a choose-your-own-adventure. If you're in a place where you know you want to stop using social media, Let me tell you how to take a break. If this isn't where you're at, go ahead and skip ahead a little bit and I'll tell you some ways to keep using but not get bummed out and how to use in a way that puts the best stuff forward. But right now, how to take a break from social media. So first, turn off notifications. Take some control over when you're going to look at this stuff. Instead of checking your apps, like when you have that temptation to go on and see who's been posting or who has liked your photo or what have you, Go ahead and set up a time to hang out with people in real life or even on FaceTime. It's a real difference maker to have some actual more human interactions than just words on a screen or pictures on a screen. Another way to take a break from social media, literally, as in I'm not looking at my screen today, is do something that is exercise for mental health. It's a complete 180 sitting and doing something passive like looking at a computer or phone versus going for a walk or doing some exercise of some kinds. It eases anxiety, it reduces stress hormones, this is exercise, and it releases happy hormones. Even if you don't feel like sweating or getting your heart rate up, even just moving in any way is gonna be an improvement. So go for a ride in anything with wheels that you can go on that's safe for you, uh, or stretch. Another way to take a break from social media is, hey, get a hobby. Maybe one that makes you feel relaxed or connected to yourself or the universe. Some examples would be cooking or hiking, something artistic, or even just staring at the stars. I also want to put a plug in here for journaling. You'd be surprised what happens when you write things down. Take a break from social media by putting your phone across the room at night. (laughs) I heard someone um, back in the day 
say that the way that they made themselves get up in the morning was by putting their phone or their alarm clock across the room. So do the opposite here. Put your phone across the room so it's just a little bit too much work to get up and check it again. And if your notifications are off, you really might forget it's there if you can put your energy into something else before bedtime. Maybe you're going on social media on these platforms to get information about mental health. So I wanted to take a couple minutes just to talk about how to navigate that world. So they're called pop psych channels. These are places on TikTok or YouTube or Facebook where people are posting information about mental health. Now, the first question is, is this person a quote unquote amateur or are they actually a licensed professional in mental health? There are a lot of mental health videos on TikTok. In fact, about a year ago, TikTok realized that there was so many random people posting stuff about very serious mental health issues like eating disorders and suicide that they rolled out some new features where if someone is searching for those terms, they're going to be provided information on how to get help for either of those issues. So you are looking to find out who is posting this information that you're looking at? Is it someone who is a licensed therapist, a social worker, or a doctor? There are people who post that are per per sharing their personal experiences of surviving a mental health issue. And that is totally great. It's just they should be honest and forthright that that is the perspective that they're taking when they share their stuff. For professionals like me, I'm out here hoping just to provide information that's helpful. This is not personal. This is information that applies to anyone who is listening. For some people who are professionals, they're out there sharing their expertise and they're doing it because they want to do good work. So I read an article um, that felt, felt like a really good way to think through, are you looking at a trustworthy source when you're getting mental health info online? So the article's called How to Vet Mental Health Advice on TikTok and Instagram. The journalist who wrote it was Tatum Hunter in the Washington Post. The first thing you can do to find out if what you're looking at is legit is look at the creator's qualifications. Again, not everyone needs to be a professional, but they should be honest about that. Are they an expert or are they an enthusiast? If someone's calling themselves a coach or just an expert, that doesn't mean that they actually have studied and passed licensure exams quote from this article I really liked was, valid helpful content should make you feel encouraged, not hopeless, angry, or conspiratorial. So conspiratorial means, uh, it sounds like maybe it's a conspiracy theory. Also, look at who else is talking about what you are viewing. Are most posts that are related to it by other licensed professionals are people who are commenting, people with licenses and professional experience? It is a red flag if you are looking at a creator who is diagnosing people online. Do not follow or listen to that advice. No provider can evaluate and diagnose anyone without actually talking to and meeting with the person who needs the diagnosis. So that is not legit. Next, I'm going to perhaps give you a chance to think about who you are being online. So up until now, I've focused on what you're looking at or who you're interacting with, but this is about who you are. Before you post, take a minute to ask yourself, do I need to post this? What's going to be the benefit? And will anyone, including me, possibly get hurt by it? If you say yes to any of that, it probably shouldn't go online. And also, if you're going to be out putting yourself out there, be more than your numbers. How many of your followers are really there for you? Will they be there for you in person or on the phone when you need them? How many of those people who are following you, liking your photos or snapping you, do you trust? And that's my review of social media as it might be affecting you or has or will, depending on what you're doing and how much. I was just thinking how ironic it is that you could very well be listening to this on your phone. And I guess I'm going to ask you to think about when you're done listening, what will you do? Will you be switching over to another app so you can check what you missed while you've been listening to this? Will you put your phone down and go do something that will help you improve your mood? I invite you to 
decide a way to challenge yourself. Can you use social media less? Can you use it differently? Is there some way you want to have a more positive impact through the apps that you use? Is there something you wish you were spending more time doing instead of being on your phone? And how do you get started on that? Or to look at this from a different angle, if you're listening because you know that you struggle with your mental health and you are looking for ways to make that better, maybe trying a social media fast would be a way to see if that affects your mood. And I will say, changing any behavior often causes things to be a little bit worse before they're better. So if you've gotten into this habit of checking your apps in the evening for an hour or two, just taking that away without a plan for what you're going to do instead could actually make you feel even worse. So before you make any changes, plan it out. What are you going to need? What are you going to plan to replace this thing in your life? And how hard do you want to go? Is it just something you want to try once? Is it something you want to try for a week? Is it something you want to do with somebody else? Challenge them. Have a competition. Who has the least screen use this week? You have spent some time listening to this episode, and I want to thank you for that. We've talked about how social media can impact your mental health, ways you can take a break or reduce the bummer effect from social media, and ways you can be a little bit more thoughtful about how you are when you're online. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Please share this information with other people and know that you've taken a little time to find one way that you can take some control over improving how you feel. Thank you for listening to this first episode of Not Now, Maybe Later. This is a project supported by Sweetser. I want to thank the artist Super R for the song Dopamine Hits that you've heard parts of throughout this episode. Thank you to Pixabay, the website that allows us free access to sound effects. Thank you to Laura Sunderland Photography for the photo shoot that helped me with promotion. And most especially, thank you to my producer and mixer. You know who you are, and I love you so much. Please listen, review, and follow Not Now, Maybe Later on your favorite podcast forum. And if you'd like to make suggestions on future episodes, you can email notnowmaybelaterpodcast at gmail.com or use any comment sections on the podcast platforms that you're listening on. Thanks. Talk to you next time.